In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Let us pray. On my heart imprint your image, blessed Jesus, King of grace, that life's riches, cares, and pleasures never may your work erase. Let the clear inscription be, Jesus crucified for me, is my life, my hope's foundation, and my glory and salvation. Amen. Today we celebrate the festival of St. Michael and all angels. Why? Why do we celebrate? We Lutherans. Why do we Lutherans celebrate St. Michael and all angels? We're not the superstitious types who cling to angels and dead saints, right? We have Jesus. Why then do we remember the works of St. Michael, St. Gabriel, St. Raphael, and all the hosts of heavenly angels? St. John records the account of the battle in heaven, saying, Now war arose in heaven, Michael and his angels fighting against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back, but he was defeated, and there was no longer any place for them in heaven. And the great dragon was thrown down, that ancient serpent, who is called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the world. He was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. Now this doesn't sound like the angels of our modern art and media, does it? These aren't cute little cherubs riding on the clouds, nor are they images from the show touched by an angel. You probably wouldn't want to be touched by these angels. These angels are fierce and majestic. They fight and go to war against the snares and wickedness of the devil. They're not hallmark angels but the warriors of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. It says in the text that St. Michael and his angels fought against or went to war or battled against the dragon and his angels. However, there are two different words here that describe what St. Michael and his angels did and what the dragon and his angels did. St. Michael and his angels polemesi, or actively fought against the dragon. They charged and were not on the defensive. They weren't defending heaven. They were casting the dragon out of paradise. In contrast to this, the dragon and his angels epolemesin, or fought back. Back. They fought defensively in order to remain and not be cast down to earth. The dragon, that ancient serpent who is the devil, fought like the heavyweight who swings wildly at the end of the fight because he knows that he's lost. He knows that he can't win. Therefore, he swings like a drunken, enraged man, hoping to land the knockout punch. However, St. Michael delivered the blow on the dragon's chin that cast Satan out of paradise, out of heaven, for there was no longer a place for the dragon and his angels in eternal bliss. But what does that have to do with you and me? St. Michael and his angels kicked the dragon out of heaven, but they cast him down here on earth. As it says in the text, he was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. Now, it's our problem. The devil is not in heaven, but walking about to and fro on this earth, seeking someone to devour, as St. Peter declares in his epistle. How do you and I deal with this tempter? How are we to deal with this one? He was able to tempt Adam and his wife while they were still in a state of perfection and purity in the garden prior to the fall in sin. He cast unbelief into the hearts of Adam and his wife by twisting God's word and brought sin and death into the world. Adam and his wife fell. Therefore, rather than being conceived and born righteous, we inherit the sin of Adam and are conceived in original sin. 
Can we do better than Adam and Eve considering that we are sinful rather than righteous as they were when they were tempted by the devil? The devil is here on this earth. His presence is clear in this world. You see murder, theft, homosexuality, euthanasia, abortion, pornography, genocide, rape, lies, deceit, marital unfaithfulness, and a whole list of vices and sin that is too deep and long for this sermon. Do you really believe in the devil? Do you actually believe that he spends his days and his nights tempting you? Do you fight against him? Or do you justify the sin you commit and the wickedness in which you participate? The devil's been cast down to this earth. Believe it. It isn't a joke. The devil is here and all he wants is for you to remain in unrepentant sin. He wants you to sleep in on Sunday morning or worse. He actually wants you here in church. The devil wants you here, but not for the same reason that Jesus does. The devil wants you within the walls in order that you can live a lie. He wants you here going through the motions and daydreaming. He wants you to take your children out of worship when they're too noisy in order that they can play with toys in the nursery rather than sitting their backsides down and behaving and hearing the words of eternal life. The devil wants you to do that. He wants you holding grudges against your neighbor here at this place of forgiveness. He wants you here in hatred and jealousy. He wants you here with your agendas. Why does the devil want this? He wants it because it's the greatest trick he can play on you. He makes you think that you are righteous, but really you are sinful and wicked. Under the temptation of the devil, you and I call a bad thing good and a good thing bad. You become the lie of old, the gossiper and the deceiver. You and I are the unrepentant sinner as long as we continue to reject the presence of the devil in this world and especially in this congregation. Repent, for not believing in the devil will not make him go away. All it does is lead you in unbelief under the wrath of God rather than in His grace. How then do you fight against this ancient serpent? The same way that Saint Michael and his angels did. First, you must stop being on the defensive with the devil. You must see that he exists and is here to take your life, both temporal and eternal. Just as St. Michael and his angels took the fight to the dragon, so you must take the fight to the devil. But how? You don't have a flaming sword in your hand and immortality, do you? You can't make mountains move by the sound of your voice, nor can you call down fire and brimstone from heaven like it's Sodom and Gomorrah, can you? Well, that's good. Because St. Michael and his angels did not defeat the dragon that way either. They did not defeat the dragon by their power and might, but rather they conquered him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. For they loved not their lives even unto death. By the blood of the Lamb... And the word of their testimony did St. Michael and his angels cast the dragon out of paradise and down to this world. How was the devil cast out? How was he cast out from heaven and down to this earth? By Jesus coming and declaring war against him. The battle began when the trumpet was sounded as Gabriel preached forth to Mary that she would bear a son, though she be a virgin. And his name would be Jesus, the deliverer of a people in bondage to sin, death, and the power of the devil. 
The battle continued as Jesus overcame where Adam failed by suffering the temptations of the devil in the wilderness only to have the devil bested by the word made flesh. The war raged on as Jesus carried the sin of the world upon his shoulders as he marched the cross to Calvary. And the devil thought that he'd won. He saw the Son of God rejected by man. God was a fool, the devil said, as he danced around the dead body of Christ, the crucified. The devil laughed with exceeding and wicked joy as he watched them lay the body of Jesus into the tomb. He thought the battle was over. The blood was shed and the side pierced, but the death of Jesus is not eternal. Jesus didn't remain in the stone grave, but descended into the belly of the beast to declare victory over the devil, to run his victory lap carrying the banner of the cross before that ancient serpent and his wicked legions in hell. Jesus took the victory over sin and death and ascended to sit at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, forever risen from the grave's dark prison, and he is victorious. Jesus has won the battle and declared victory in the war against sin and the devil. The blood of the Lamb is victorious and the only means by which the devil is cast out of paradise. Only the blood of Jesus, the eternal blood of Jesus, overcomes sin, death, and the power of evil. In the blood of the Lamb is their strength against the snares and wickedness of the devil. This is how you fight against the devil. Not in your own strength, for then you would fail. Saint Michael and his archangels did not use their own strength, but solely proclaimed the victory in the accomplishment of Jesus Christ on the cross. They declared the news of Jesus for all mankind, therefore the heavens rejoice, but woe to us while still here on earth, for we still fight, we still sin, we still bleed, and the devil knows all our weak spots. But the battle call has been sounded. The charge is begun. We charge and fight against the dragon and his legions, not with your works, not with your deeds, not with your strength. No, you charge against the forces of darkness and wickedness with tongues and lips stained in the blood of Christ as you proclaim the victory of the cross. You charge on the field of battle that is this world, not with your own opinions and philosophy, not with fortunes and the strength of this world, but with the mark of the cross on your forehead. The devil trembles whenever he beholds a baptized believer for he knows that he has lost. Fear is cast deep into his black, abysmal heart as he beholds the cross shining forth both upon your forehead and upon your heart. You are marked as one redeemed by Christ the crucified. Jesus has claimed you in the waters of holy baptism, therefore the devil has no authority. He is on the defensive. What, what a great joy this is. The good news that the wicked foe of old is overcome for you. It may not seem like that. It may not seem like such a joy that when you leave church today, you can do nothing but tell everyone you know about it. But suffer the temptations of the wicked serpent. Suffer that he desires your flesh to be destroyed and you to be cast into hell. Know that Jesus has overcome that for you. Jesus has vanquished him. What joy this is. Rejoice, therefore, you baptized believers. This day you hear the testimony that conquers the devil and sin. This day you hear the good news, the battle charge against the dragon. This day you hear the testimony of the blood of the Lamb, not through the mouth of some archangel, but through the sinful and sanctified lips of Christ's sent servant. Hear the words that your Savior desires you to hear for eternal life. Do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. 
Your name is written not in the book of the devil's lies, but in the book of life, sealed forever in the blood of the Lamb shed for you on the cross. You were named as God's own child in the waters of holy baptism the day that Jesus declared you his own and where he continues to call you back in order that you may know that Christ Jesus fights for you against anything that may assail you. Rejoice this day, you who fight the good fight, for you are not on your own. Christ Jesus goes before you and defends your flank. He walks beside you and carries the banner of the resurrection against the dragon and his legions. He is your victory. Jesus is your life. This is why we celebrate Saint Michael and all angels. We celebrate because they cast the dragon and his angels out of paradise the same way, with the same message that the devil and sin are cast out of your life this day. And that message is the message of the cross, the message of the bloody sacrifice of Jesus for your salvation. Rejoice this day, believers, for Christ Jesus fights for you. The devil is defeated. You belong to Christ forever. In his name, amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.